Danielle Barrett. I'm Sophia Rosenblum. I'm Rachel Dutton. I'm Marlo Schultz. And I'm London Wilkes. We are proposing the application for dimethyl decalammonium chitosan methacrylate, or DMBC, as an antimicrobial coating for pig lung catheters. The problem, Staphylococcus aureus. In the United States, around 1 million hospitalized patients per year develop life-threatening bloodstream infections, costing Americans about $20 billion in healthcare. Figure 2 shows that just around 15 days after the catheter has been inserted into the body, Staphylococcus aureus has already been in inserted into the bloodstream. Due to the immunocompromised state of the patients, Staphylococcus aureus has already Staphylococcus aureus is far from trivial for chemotherapy patients, especially those who are using pink line catheters. Catheter associated BSIs can result in two fatal bloodstream infections. So why do catheters need this antimicrobial coating? Well, in the figure you see on the right, um, it shows that the, the correlation between two drugs, penicillin and methicillin, and Staphylococcus aureus' um, resistance rate to it. So only after a course of five years, Staphylococcus, Staphylococcus aureus was already 10% resistant. Today, it is nearly 100% resistant. What the market needs is a product that gets out ahead of the bacteria before it can enter the bloodstream and become an infection. So the way our product works is the interior of a pick line catheter would be coated in this DMDC membrane. Everything coming through the catheter would be affected by the membrane. So if Staphylococcus aureus or any other the negatively charged bacteria got in, they would be killed by this membrane, saving the life of a patient. DMDC is biocompatible and safe to be used in the human body. Composed of sugar molecules crosslinked with proteins, this organic glu um, this organic glu um, protein, um, this protein, um, Protein is, bio, is, is similar to that found in osteoarthritis medications. So how does it work? In this video, so, so how does it work? Um, the DMDC molecular surface has thousands of tiny nanopores which are positively charged. The bacteria cells are much smaller and negatively charged. Like a magnet, the nanopores attract the bacteria. Inside of the nanopores, the bacterial cell wall is ruptured, thus killing the bacteria. Um, so this compound was first created by Sing Singapore's Nanyang Technological University in 2015. We are in a unique position to create a relevant application for this product. In this video, the magnet represents the DMDC membrane and how it attracts the iron filings, which represent the staph bacteria. To get this product to a place where it would be marketable, to get this product to a place where it would be marketable, there will be many milestones we'll need to reach. The first is membrane and prototype production, which would involve testing on real cells and bacteria to ensure the safety and effectivity of the membrane. Next, we would need to refine the prototype design per federal regulations. The next step would be to hire a marketing manager to sell our product to a larger company. This would help to provide the next round of funding needed to complete the process. The next stage is animal and human patient testing, where we would perform initial tests on animal and human subjects, as well as conducting a one-month follow-up testing. Um, Next, we would analyze the results and data derived from our first testing and submit an FDA application for a new drug. Lastly, we would hire a sales force of five marketing managers to market our product to cancer treatment hospitals. Startups like ours include ClearGuard, which engineers antimicrobial caps for hemodialysis catheters. Last year alone, ClearGuard saved $600 million in hemodialysis infection. Funding for these startups has come from biomedical investors like Crosslink Capital and the National Institutes of Health. Crosslinkers A and B are the two main antimicrobial catheter coatings. However, they have many side effects, including respiratory complications and birth defects. Our product um, in the catheter can stay inserted for up to one year, while our competitor products can only be inserted for one to 10 months. 
you are coding would be revolutionary. It's the first ever effective, long-lasting, and safe pipeline catheter. Thank you, Nick Roby. Thank you, ladies. <laughs> it's always hard to go first, so well done. <laughs> All right, so. Um, so now we've got uh, five minutes for Q&A by our panelists. I'd like to start. Can you explain how your coating would actually stick onto the catheter surfaces? Do you want me to answer the question? Um, sure. So as the polymer is a hydrogel, it would, it would um, utilize its self-adhesion to stick to the sides of the catheter and then it would prevent, because the Staphylococcus aureus attaches to the sides of the catheter as a film, it would prevent it from being able to attach and develop. And, and do you worry about it coming off during use, use of the catheter? Um, I think that's an interesting question, and I'm not sure, <laughs> but we'll get back to you. Um, <laughs> uh, I think that we could replace the hydrogel periodically? Hi. <laughs> Tell me how you came up with your business plan. What process did you go through? Did you each have individual roles? And how did you deal with conflict during your discussion? So we began by dividing each part of the entire project into different parts. So for example, some people would research about the actual Staphylococcus, and some people would research about how we would get the money, some like stuff like that. And so if we ever had a, like a debate on which who was correct, which information was correct, then we would ask another person to go deep into the research and see to, to, to fix the conflict. What was the thing that you had the biggest disagreement over? Um, I don't think that we had any major disagreements. I think there were some minor things that were mostly just fact-based that we hadn't done enough research on, so there were conflicting viewpoints there, but I think with extra research we were able to resolve everything. You all still seem to be friends, so I think it would be <laughs> It was very, I read your report and the presentation is very detailed, it's very good. Thank you. Um, so it seems like it's pretty low hanging fruit, which is good, because you want something that you could take to market pretty quickly. And it sounds like uh, this um, material you're using, the polymer, has been used in throat delivery mm -hmm. and other things in the medical field. So it's sort of proven itself. Uh, and now it's just a matter of taking it to the last step. <coughs> what, what's your thoughts on competitors being able to um, take the technology that you're working on and just easily implement it? So kind of barriers to entry for competitors. Um, well, I was, I've been researching this compound and how it's already been used. And I saw in a couple of the articles, they were saying this would be great as a coding for catheters, but they never actually implemented it. And that was after we already came up with our idea. I just wanted to make sure that nobody else did it yet. And so I'm no, nothing that I saw, nobody else has used it for catheters, but they are starting to think of it. If it's good for contact labs and some pacemakers, and they are starting to think, well, maybe it's good for antibiotics or catheters. Um, so one of the upsides that we would potentially have as a small startup is that while larger companies can sometimes struggle to get their ideas off the ground because it's a big system within big corporations and it's hard to really get the ball rolling on a new innovation, um, because we're small and we have like person-to-person -person connections, it would be easier to get our product developed. Great, thank you. I think your presentation was fantastic. And the way you broke it down, how did you decide on who was speaking? Did you speak to um, who spent the most time on each aspect yeah. and felt a, a, a personal attachment to that bit of 
Who wants to speak to how you decided on the presentation so structure? Individually, we all researched what we were most interested in about this, and then it was pretty easy to separate into categories because we would pick the thing we felt most confident about and we knew most information on. All right, um, I think that's, no, no, no. I think that's all the time we have for the questions for team one, so thank you guys. Thank you. Well done.